What's up guys, good morning and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2021 for stage number 17 of our enduro playthrough with DSM. Today's stage is a mountain one between Ponte di Legno and Lavarone. If you've missed the previous episodes, do go ahead and check them out, but if you have, then let's go. 165 kilometers on the board. Alright, I'm sorry if the lighting has changed. Uh, I've loaded the stage 7 minutes ago. And it, I mean, I clicked on play 7 minutes ago. I'm running, like, Magus Graphics. But oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Didn't expect that to, to take that long. Uh, but either way, we've got some attacks already. Jai, Hindley, and Lorenzo Fortunato. It's a shame I really needed Martin Tuzel to be well placed. He isn't. He isn't. Uh, we've got already a clone to begin with, Di Passo del Tonale. Gonna have a lot of attacks. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the breakaway, sadly. So, we'll see if we can do something with Romain Di Passo del Vetriolo. Or uh, towards the Menador de Monte Rovere, but um, I'm not really sure. There's been a crash in the breakaway involving Buchmann, Mark van Sevenant, uh, um, I believe Zana, Kovi was dropped prior to that. Um, breakaway is 6.15 in the lead, 50k to go. We find Attila Valta, Mikel Schirel, Jahen Lee, Rossi Roras, Tobias Foz, Domenico Pozzo, and Lorenzo Fortunato. They are most likely going to win the stage. Despite me pacing 80 the entire day, the gap is massive. So I decided to increase the rhythm a bit with Tuzvelt. Turns out I dropped the peloton, so they came back at me, but now they've attacked and they've dropped Barle. That has not gone to plan. And sadly for me, Jaihin is going to take 32 points at Di Vetriolo, and he seems to be the strongest, so he's most likely going to get 32 points in Monte Rovere. I believe we've just said goodbye to the Azura Jazz. Quite a few crashes uh, happening. Matias Sobrero, second, 120. Yeah, no, that was, I was like, that's my gap. There's no way Sobrero second. Uh, but yeah, we've got quite a lot of crashes. Thankfully for, for those riders, they should be quite fine because no one is pacing in his peloton. Uh, Tuzvelt has been dropped, but I reckon he's going to come back. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll go hammer time in, uh, in Di Monte Rovere. But even with that, the summit is 8 kilometers from the end. Things could happen. I don't know. Uh, let's first get water because Mr. Tuzvelt did not deliver. All right, let's go. Strada El Menador, 7.8 kilometers, average gradient of 10%. This is not a climb for the faint hearted. This is a big boy climb. This is a, a, a big man climb, if anything. We'll go 81 for now. I'll uh, use the gel on Timon Arnsman and see where we go from here. We're going to catch some of the riders such as Vincenzo Nibeli and Emmanuel Buchmann that went breakaway some fighty level as Jaihin Lee attacks again in the leading group. Pozzo cannot... Actually, he does. He does follow. So does Lorenzo Fortunato. Four counts of the summit and we're going to attack with Roman. We're going to attack. I was told that I need to do this if I want to actually drop people. This may be a bit early if I'm honest. It may be a bit of an early move, I don't know. The scenery is absolutely glorious. Yeah, Carapace is the one chasing, and Carapace is going to bring everyone back on me. Think what needs to be done as, as the, the Maglia Rosa, I guess. I'm going to have to lower my rhythm just so I can recover some energy, because I don't want to get dropped immediately. We've got three riders from Bahrain here. Doing really, really well in, um, in this final week. All right, so I try to push it just again. Uh, I don't know who's leading. It's, it's Di Hindley. Shock. So he's going to win the stage. Is there points at the end? All right, there's none. Thank God for that. 13 riders in this group. Uh, everyone trying to hold on. Whirlpool just got dropped. And across the summit we go. Sadly, there is no gap with Richard Carabas. We did, however, drop Joe Almeida. Just like in real life, he's going to try and uh, just stick to the wheels of the riders ahead of him. I reckon I can just push a bit on this slightly uphill portion there. Making sure that Joe stays behind. If I'm not getting P1, at least I can drop P3. That was a good effort. Landa's attacked. And he's going to gain a few seconds back on us. But yeah, we've dropped Joe Almeida. Uh, Nibali, I don't know what happened to Nibali. But either way, 2.5k away in the fog, in the mist. Jai Hindley wins in Lavarone. Romain Varde is going to try and attack early to try and anticipate a potential sprint. Mikel Landa will come home and get absolutely smoked by Roma Barley. Maybe he's going to come back on the line, though. He is not. It's P4 for Barley, P6 for Carapace. No gaps with the Ecuadorian. 
The GC does not change, but Jai Hindley has most likely won the Azura jersey. Very, very fun stage to play. Um, takes a while to load, but it's understandable. Uh, Jai Hindley wins ahead of Fuzzo and Fortunato. We're the best of the rest, uh, finishing with Landa and Carabas time wise. We're still 128 behind the Ecuadorian, and we have got a sprint stage coming up, meaning that we need to be the best we've ever been on the Santuario di Castelmonte and the stage uh, that I, uh, ends, sorry, at the Pato Fedaya before the 16 km time trial in Verona. Can we defeat Richard Carapaz? Will I still hate myself for losing that one minute on a flat stage earlier in this Giro? Most likely, because it seems that it's going to be either first or second for us. I mean, there's now 15, 21 down. But if you want to see how this Giro unfolds, if you want to see if Romain Bardet can do what he could not do in real life, which is finish the Giro, then do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and just, just enjoy the content coming through. Thank you for the support on the videos recently and I'll see you tomorrow for stage 18 of the Giro d'Italia. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, go.